also those who are um, online watching the service. We have some announcements. Um, youth group meets from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock the first Saturday of each month. And something new um, starting this coming Saturday, we're going to have what we're calling Saturday School. It'll be from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock the third Saturday of each month. And it's for preschool to sixth grade. We're going to use uh, Bible school materials and kind of do a mini Bible school. It's for the children from our church. We're not advertising it out to the public. It's just for the church. And there'll be a lesson. There'll be crafts. There'll be snacks. Are there snacks there? Um, so if you know any children from our church who might like to attend, please let them know. It starts this Saturday at 2 o'clock. Our flower power fundraiser is still going on. You can order online or we have catalogs back, paper catalogs back on the table. You can pick one of those up. The orders are due May 1st. Um, we also have frost and flame magnets for sale for $5. They benefit the uh, mission barn. Our church cookbooks are still on sale, $3 a piece. And you can donate to the usual things as you can see in the bulletin, or not on the bulletin, on the screen. The building fund, the pastor's discretionary fund, we're still collecting aluminum cans. Um, if anyone wants to put flowers on the altar, they're $15, and you need to let Jess know ahead of time. Also, if you have any announcements that need to go in the bulletin, you can call Jess at the number listed on the screen or email to the um, church's email address. Please do that by Wednesday at noon to get in the, um, the announcements for that week. Our first hymn is Up From the Grave He Arose. You can sing, but please speak, sing in your speaking voice.
fellowship? This is the good news which we proclaim to you. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is raised, raised from, from the, the dead. dead. Walk in the light of his love. Live in the light of his teachings and healing mercies. Come, let us worship the one who overcame death. Let us celebrate the triumph of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Psalm 27, the triumphant psalm of confidence of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask of the Lord that I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of the trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Thus ends our first scripture reading for this morning. Um, it's time now for our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys or concerns this morning? I have a few. We got a call this morning from Perch, who was planning on coming to school, coming to school, coming to church. Um, he wasn't feeling well, so he needs prayers. Joanne texted Jen. She was coming, but she hurt herself at work this week. She thinks she may have um, fractured ribs, so we need to keep her in prayer. And I have two families that lost um, loved ones this week, the Beer family and um, the Scatteregia family. So if we could keep them in prayers. Do we have any others? Marty? I have a joy when I park out in the parking lot over facing the house in front of the church, and on their electric meter, there's a robin building a nest. So if you want to spy on her, um, stop and, and look and see. Not, not too much is happening. I think she's either building her nest or else um, she can't be sitting because she doesn't stay there all the time, so she can't be sitting on eggs yet. But that'll be something to watch. Yes, yes. A robin building her nest out on the, an electric meter. We can keep an eye on that. Anybody else? If not, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here together today on this beautiful Sunday morning. Bless each one of us who is here. Guide and direct us through the week. Make sure that we can, are able to come back next week to worship your name again. Father, we ask that we be with those who we have on our prayer list this morning. Be with Kurt, help him to feel better. Be with Joanne, help her ribs to heal if they are indeed broken, or if only bruised, help them to heal. We ask that you be with the Clinebeer family on the loss of their father and grandfather this week, and also with the Scatteringia family on the loss of a husband and a dad. Surround those families with your loving arms, Father. Let them know that you are with them. We know you're there all the time, but make sure they know it as well. Father, we ask you to be with any unspoken prayers that we might have, and be with those who continue on our prayer list. And now we pray the prayer as it was taught to us by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us all our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And this is the time during our service when we would ordinarily take up our offering. 
but because of the COVID situation, we're not able to do that now. We would remind you that we do have baskets on the back table where you can drop your offering. If you're watching us online and would like to, we would encourage you to mail in your offerings to the church. Um, even though we're not here as much as we used to be, there, we still have our bill to take along. And, and we're grateful for anything that you can contribute to us to help to continue to pay those bills. And now if um, we could go to the Lord and thank him for the offerings that we do have. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that you have given us. We know that it comes from you, and we offer back to you our share so that we can continue to do your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second scripture this morning comes from 1 John chapter 1, verse 1 through chapter 2, verse 2. The word of life. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. God is light. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we declare ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Christ is our advocate. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice of our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And now our message this morning comes from our bishop, Cynthia Moore Koikoi. Re she recorded this message to be used today as she encouraged all of her um, pastors to take the day off. Pastor Melanie is at a training of some sort, I believe. But um, she encouraged them all not to preach on this Sunday because in looking over the records from the last year, most of them have not taken their vacations and certainly not the full vacation time. So that's why we're going to hear our, our bishop with her message this morning. But if we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 7. Last Easter, while I worked with the praise team at Deep Hill United Methodist to record an online worship service, I had no idea that one year later, I would be recording another service online because we would still be under the cloud of the pandemic. We've seen some dark days as a result of the coronavirus. But even in the midst of the darkness, there have been churches in this annual conference and all over the country that have been pointing people to the light and joy that is theirs through Jesus the Christ. Now some churches have been using their church signs outside to testify to that light and joy. You know, there, there are probably as many First Baptist churches as there are First United Methodist churches. But one First Baptist church has a really nice digital sign 
and apparently a comedian who is responsible for that sign. One week, the sign said, give us clean hands and Purell hearts. On Palm Sunday, the message was, shout Hosanna, but first step back six feet. One week, the Faith United Methodist Church sign read, keep loving, keep praying, keep distance, God is near. North Bethesda UMC, which happens to be in the Baltimore, Washington conference, posted on their sign one week, we're closed, but God is always open. A another week, the sign said, wash your hands and use them for prayer. During this, this COVID season, the sign outside of Fellowship Baptist Church said, when life is hard to stand, kneel. The Edgewood Congregational Church wrote, service is canceled, God is making house calls. With, with a bit of sarcasm, Walnut Grove Baptist Church put on its sign, this too shall pass. It might pass like a kidney stone, but it's going to pass. <laughs> Bethany, uh, Free Will Baptist Church wrote, Jesus cleans the heart, we disinfect the pew. Some, some churches, like Park Methodist Church, quoted scripture on their signs. Wash yourselves and be clean, from Isaiah 1.16. Other churches, like North Lake Lutheran Church, just made up scripture. Wash hands, don't touch face, high Genesis 24.7. But perhaps my favorite sign was from another First Baptist Church. For weeks, their sign read, Faith not canceled, hope not closed, love not quarantined. Join us on WNOI 950 on your AM dial. Over this past year, churches have been doing what they can to testify to the light and joy that is ours through Jesus Christ. Let me say how godly proud I am of the clergy and laity of this annual conference who have come in there together through the darkness of this past year, lifting one another up when we have been down. Pointing, pointing each other to, to the light when we couldn't see it for ourselves. Finding ways to be, be the fellowship of believers when we couldn't physically meet together as we so desperately long to do. I praise God for those who have been a testimony to the light and the joy that is ours through Jesus. Now, let me confess that one of the ways that I've gotten some joy through this COVID season has been by watching the reality TV show, Hoarders, and its sister show, Hoarders, Buried Alive. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have seen either of those shows, uh, but, but these shows, these programs, they, they chronicle three or four days in the life of a hoarder as their friends and family members with the help of a professional organizer and a psychologist confront a hoarder about their hoarding behavior. In, in each one of the episodes, the professional organizers encourage the hoarders to sort all of their stuff into several piles, one pile that they hope is the largest pile, a pile that is trash. Another pile that is a pile of things that will be given away or donated. A third pile that, of a, that is a pile of things that could possibly be sold to make a, a little money. And then the last pile, the pile that they hope to be the smallest, a pile of things to actually keep. Well, even if you haven't seen the show, 
I'm sure that you probably can imagine the, the tears, the, the agony, the drama of it all as the reporters go about the process of making the decisions about what goes where. Now, one day I was, I was watching one particular episode and, and oddly enough, the scripture read earlier from First John actually came to my mind. In, in, this, in this particular episode, the, the reporter also happened to have obsessive compulsive disorder and was a germaphobe. Not too surprising since all of those disorders really are anxiety based. But was, what, what was a little surprising, what was quite interesting, was to see this woman live amongst the filth of the stuff inside of her home, yet she had to ritualistically wash clothes that she had worn outside of her home an average of six times before she felt that they were clean. A another one of her rituals was to take her possessions outside and let them soak in the sun because she believed that the light of the sun would cleanse them. In this episode, she took the lids of some large plastic totes, lids that had had mold and animal droppings on them, and she put them out of the sun so that, according to her reasoning, the sun would cleanse them. And she was desperately trying to convince the organizer and her family that the totes could be redeemed by the sun, and thus they could be put into the heap. As the hoarder was arguing with the professional organizer, and as the organizer was trying to tell the hoarder that the sun was not going to sufficiently clean the items and therefore they had to be put in the throwaway pile, as this argument was happening, I thought of First John. But as we walk in the light, as he himself is in the light. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. As this woman was, was pleading, as she was weeping, as she was getting more and more angry over the, thing, over the thought of, of her things being thrown away, I thought of how grateful I was that the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, was sufficient to cleanse all of my sin. I thought about how grateful I was that God did not throw me away, but decided that I was for the keep pile. Now, I know, I know it may seem odd that I experienced Jesus while watching a reality show. I know, I know that it may seem odd that I felt the reassurance of my salvation while hearing someone argue over dirty storage totes. But God does work in mysterious ways. And I consider my revelation, my moment of reassurance to be an answer to prayer. You see, I have been praying for all of us that God would break through the mundane things of this pandemic and reveal God's self to us in new and, and, and undeniable and, and overwhelming ways. I've been praying for God to break through in new ways because we have not had access to the ordinary ways in which we experience the presence of God, the, the ordinary ways like, like communion or, or hymn singing or potluck suppers. I've been praying for God to overwhelm us because some of us have been overwhelmed by the pandemic. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for myself. And I know that, that some of you have been praying for me too. So I consider it to be an answer to prayer. 
And so I pray again today. I pray that we will hear afresh, or for the first time, the declaration from God that I felt so profoundly during that episode of Borders. Hear this declaration for yourself today. You are a keeper. And, and, and it doesn't matter where you have been or what you have done. The blood of Jesus is sufficient to cleanse all of your sin. Through the work of Jesus Christ, God has declared that there is something precious and marvelous and remarkable about you. Yes, you. God has chosen to redeem you so that God can keep you by God's side forever in the keep pile. During the darkness of, of this pandemic, you may have felt inadequate because you were not able to provide for your family as you, you once did. You may have felt deficient because you weren't able to help your children with their virtual homework or, or work and work remotely and keep the house clean. You might have felt guilty because you weren't able to shield your loved ones from the pain and isolation of this pandemic. And I know that there's some clergy out there that have even questioned their call because they didn't know how to do church in this season. But I beg you, please extend to yourself a measure, just a small measure, of the grace that is yours through Jesus Christ. God did not ask you to be Jesus Christ, just to follow Jesus Christ. So cut yourself some slack. During the darkness of this pandemic, you may have felt regret because you became short-tempered with the people you love. During the darkness of this pandemic, you, you may have acted below your Christian witness by hurling disrespectful, hurtful words towards the ones you love or even towards these strangers. Hear this declaration. All of us, all of us, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God in one way or another during this pandemic. So I want all of us, all of us, to hear and feel this declaration deep down in our souls. Hear this word. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. And so in the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. During the darkness of this pandemic, you may have felt overwhelmed, stressed out, or depressed. It may have impacted your mental health. Know that you, you don't have to live in darkness because God has declared that you are a keeper because God has made that declaration. God has gifted people here on earth to treat your mental health concerns. And there's a fellowship in heaven, a fellowship in heaven of the Holy Spirit and, and Jesus the Christ, the triune God, and they're working with the gifted human vessels here on earth to bring about your full restoration to health. Beloved, you don't have to be able to see the light right now. God in God's extravagant grace is reaching out to you, pulling you into the light, trying to point you to the signs of the light and joy of Jesus. And all you need to bring to the party is just a little bit of faith, the size of a mustard seed, a little bit of faith, and a little bit of cooperation with God's Holy Spirit. And you will begin to see the light. Now, if you happen to, to be one of those people who are gifted with an eternal spirit of optimism, if you happen to be one of those people and you can already clearly see the light right now, 
consider that you might be called to be like the writer of First John and to, to declare for those who cannot see, cannot see the joy, cannot see the light. Maybe you're being called to, through your words or your deeds, to post signs, to post signs that are so clear that even as they're driving by in their cars, they can see them. Maybe you're being called to, through your words and deeds, point to the light and joy of Jesus. In the early 1980s, my father was appointed to Sharp Street United Methodist Church in Sandy Spring, Maryland. Sharp Street in Sandy Spring was actually started in 1822 as a church plan by Sharp Street Memorial UNC in Baltimore. Now, Sharp Street Memorial was the church in which my dad was baptized and raised. It was also the church that I joined when I became an adult. So, so there was a certain sense of God's providence for, for my dad to have been appointed in the early 1980s to a church that his home church had started in 1822. Sharp Street in Sandy Spring had, had a men's choir that sang once a month. And every time they sang, irrespective of the liturgical season, they sang the hymn, Jesus, the light of the world. It, it didn't matter if it was Lent or, or Easter or Pentecost or Christmas or, or just an ordinary time of the year. Each month, irrespective of the liturgical season, 12 times a year, year after year, they sang Jesus, the light of the world, as a recession hymn. Now, with our formal contemporary worship styles, we don't always have a recessional hymn, but there used to be a time back in the day when at the end of every worship service, the choir and the pastor would walk to the back of the sanctuary as a hymn was being sung. That was called a recessional. Now for the recessional at, at Sharpton and Sandy Spring, the men would sing the first two stanzas of Jesus the Light of the World while still in the choir. And then when they got to the refrain the second time, they would start walking down from the loft, around the chancel and altar area, and then down the center aisle. They would walk as they would sing. We'll walk in the light, you tip the light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus. The light of the world. As they sang that recessional, they, they, they shook hands and, and they encouraged others to, to shake hands. They were joyful and they were inviting. Their actions seemed to call us to, to a visual and physical affirmation of our fellowship, one with the other and with Jesus the Christ. It was as if they were inviting us as a community of believers to, to walk with Jesus in his light. And, and they were inviting us to, to take the light of Jesus, the light which we had so profoundly experienced through the fellowship of worship. They invited us, us to take that light out into the world so that others might also experience the joy of fellowship. The joy of fellowship with believers, the joy of fellowship with Jesus the Christ, the joy of being in the light. Beloved, because of COVID-19, I can't walk down the aisle and greet you with a smile or a handshake. But I hope, I hope and I pray that you believe me when I say that COVID can't stop the light of Jesus. I hope, I pray that you believe me when I say that the blood of Jesus is sufficient. I hope and I pray that you believe me when I say that God is inviting you to walk with God in the light of Jesus. And I hope that that light is now, or soon will become, so compelling, 
so compelling that you will, with joy, invite others to come and walk with us in this fellowship of believers. Walk in the light, you tearful light, come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Good. Now our praise hymn is Thine be the glory. And again, it says, Sing to your speaking voice.